you know, if you're working with React, chances are Next.js popped up pretty early on. It promised, like, blazing speed, better SEO. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It felt like a real game changer for a lot of folks. But uh, lately, maybe you're hearing some different things. Yeah. A bit of chatter. That's exactly what we're diving into today. We're exploring why some companies and, you know, individual developers, too, seem to be stepping back from Next.js. Right. And we're looking mainly at a piece from Dev Simplified, uh, March 2025, by Niha Gupta. It really digs into the shift in sentiment. Okay. So our mission here, really, is to get past that initial excitement, maybe the hype, and understand the uh, the core reasons driving this change. Yeah, what's actually causing this reevaluation? We want to give listeners some real world context for their own decisions. Makes sense. The article points out this kind of uh, evolving relationship. It went from this real enthusiasm, this go to framework in the React world. Yeah, the default choice for many. Exactly. To now, well, a growing sense of unease for some. That initial excitement isn't quite as universal anymore. It seems. It's like when a tool you really rely on starts feeling maybe a bit awkward or uh, clunky for what you need now. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to a really interesting case study. The article mentions a company called North Flank. North Flank. Okay. What happened there? Well, what's super interesting is they ran into some major performance problems using Next.js for their marketing site. Their marketing site. You'd think that'd be pretty straightforward, right? That's what you'd expect. Relatively lightweight, usually. But they handle a ton of requests, so performance is key even there. Okay, so they hit bottlenecks. Did they try to fix it? Oh, yeah. They didn't just throw their hands up. They really invested time trying to optimize, trying to work around the issues. Right, the standard approach. But ultimately, um, the quote from Will Stewart and Tom Snelling at North Flank is pretty telling. They said, uh, let me get this right. When we started running into issues with Next.js, we did what any sane team would do. We tried to fix them. Makes sense. Then we tried again. Then we realized the problem was Next.js itself. Wow. Okay, so they felt the framework itself was the limitation. That's what it sounds like, yeah. Suggest something more fundamental they couldn't just tweak away, especially on a, you know, supposedly simple site. That is surprising. Yeah. And is this just North Flanks or is this a wider thing? Well, the article suggests it's broader. It mentions looking at places like Reddit, you know, where developers often share the unfiltered truth. Ah, yes. The real talk happens there sometimes. Exactly. And the article sums up some recurring frustrations people are voicing about Next.js, things like uh, slowness during the actual development process. So not just the final site speed, but the dev experience. Right. That plus unexpected bugs being introduced and some... Uh, limitations cropping up around server client interactions how data moves back and forth okay so it's hitting both the end product and the process of building it that can definitely cause friction for teams for sure and the article kind of hints at an underlying reason for all this maybe a bit of over engineering over engineering how so well think back next.js started out as a fairly um focused framework right primarily for server-side Rendering in React. Yeah, solving that initial page load and SEO problem I, is pretty clear cut. Exactly. But the suggestion is, as it's grown and added more features, more capabilities, maybe it's become more complex than needed for every situation. Like, the features are great, but they come with overhead. Perhaps. Or maybe the complexity just gets in the way sometimes. It's like, you know, using a massive industrial tool when a simple hand tool would do the job faster and easier. Gotcha. So those extra bells and whistles might actually be slowing things down or causing headaches in some cases. That seems to be the argument some people are making, yeah. Okay, so wrapping this up a bit. Mm -hmm. The main takeaways seem to be, one, performance issues can pop up where you least expect them, like marketing sites. Right. And two, the actual developer experience, the day-to-day -day grind, is a huge factor in whether people stick with the technology. It's not just about the shiny features. It's a really good reminder that, you know, even the most popular tools aren't always perfect for every job. And things can change. The initial buzz isn't the whole story. Absolutely. And maybe the final thought for listeners is this. As these frameworks get bigger and more complex, really ask yourself, does all this added complexity actually help my specific project? Or could something simpler work better? Exactly. Is simpler sometimes more effective? It's definitely worth thinking critically about those choices, not just kind of jumping on the latest bandwagon. Food for thought, definitely.